week's Fashion Africa Voices session is one of the most exciting ones I've been trying to plan for a little while. I'm so excited to bring you this amazing, sustainable fashion pioneer, as she's been called, based in Mali, creating pieces that is made with, with handmade, limited edition, promoting local artisanship, promoting traditional weaving. She's been classed as a sustainable fashion pioneer, doing amazing things in a country we don't talk about enough of. So I'm Jacqueline Shaw, I'm your African Fashion Business Coach. I'm your host for today in this video. Do make sure to subscribe to my channel where I upload new videos, interviews, insights, trainings, and so much more every single Thursday. So now let's just jump into the video and let me introduce this amazing woman to you. Ready? Let's jump in. Okay, welcome, Owa. Thank you, Jackie, for inviting me. You are so welcome. You give me an opportunity to practice my French. <laughs> <laughs> now I've been learning, I've been learning, but I will not embarrass myself right now. But <laughs> I am getting better. Slowly, slowly. Right, this today is all about you. You are an amazing, creative, designer, powerhouse, visionary, sustainable pioneer. I could go on and on and on. But please, our to please introduce your company, what it is that you do, and the kind of product that you make. Please introduce yourself. Okay, my name is Awa Meite, and I'm from Mali. I live and work in Mali, and um, I am in a country that produces cotton, and we have the most beautiful cotton in the world. One of the most beautiful, I think. We are the first producer of cotton in Africa. And um, the problem, the challenge we are facing is that the cotton we produce um, doesn't make enough resources. Uh, people who produce cotton don't make enough money out of it because 80%, more than 80% of the cotton we produce is exported raw. So, and the prices of cotton is not decided in countries that produce. It is decided elsewhere. So producers are facing a big, big trouble because families are not afford to, to, to take children to school. They cannot afford um, to live in better conditions while they work. They work every day. They work in a way they believe in. So one of the answer to this problem is to transform what you produce and talking about that for so long instead of consuming only what is produced elsewhere because for the economy to be sustainable you have to produce um you have to make things grow but you have to transform it you have to consume it yourself then the local economy gets stronger you, you can have education you can have health, you can have peace, and you can talk about uh, the, the climate change challenges. You can talk about all the issues that the world is concerned today. You can talk about COVID-19, how to face all these problems, but for that you need your economy to be strong. You need to have your voice heard, and for that you need to work locally to create job locally, and fashion is the best way to do it today because fashion is visible, fashion is touchable, and fashion can help you tell your own narrative. That's how I started because it was really important for me to show that we are strong where we are and we can make it because we believe in ourselves, but we have to, to show to the rest of the world how uh, resourceful we are, uh, how we can get inspiration from elsewhere, but to translate it with our own words to be heard, the way we want to be heard, the way we want to be seen. Wow. You know what? Everything you are saying just hits home for me and why I do what I do. Um, I'm, one thing that I do say, which taps into what you just said, is, is that I truly believe that you should, um, once you change in Africa, you should trade in Africa, trade with Africa. And that fashion is a vehicle to do that. Um, and that's exactly what you just said. Um, 
you know, I had loads of questions about that. If you know my work, I've um, been investigating the cotton industry in Africa for 10 years. I've gone to cotton farms. I've gone to events which are about cotton. I've tried to become a little bit of a cotton geek. And that's what inspired me about your work. It was the cotton story as well as the traditional story, the traditional textiles, etc. But you really see the importance of um, value addition. Recognize that because a lot of the cotton is exported, because the farmers and those who are working in industry are not getting back the value that they can now support their families, that there's a major problem and a major disparity in this industry. So you're doing your part in, and it's not a small part, you're playing a big part. And I want to I needed this story to be shared in my network because it connects with everything that I talk about. So we've spoken about cotton. We'll probably talk a bit more about that. And for those watching, there are a few videos below that um, I've noted about um, where I've interviewed others on the cotton story for Africa. Please do go check them out. Um, so Awa, please um, share about the traditional textiles that you use in Mali. Highlight some of these because People don't talk enough about Mali, and Mali is, you know, like a, a heritage country of Africa. It's so key for education, for textiles, for tradition. It's so, people take so much inspiration from this country, music, um, jewellery, create all sorts of inspiration for Mali. Please share the type of traditional textiles or um techniques that you are tapping into with your label please uh, one of the um, well-known traditional technique we have in mali is bogolan uh, commonly called mud cloth yes. and um what is interesting about uh, the textile store in mali is that we are trying to use the traditional techniques and know-how uh, to talk about modernity, to show, to show what is Mali, what is the world today, because we see things on TV, the world is global. You may not like it or like it, the world is global. Mali is not is isolated. So to be part of the world, you have to have, you need to have your own identity also, because that makes everything richer brighter and you learn you learn from others and you bring something also to others i think we are in a way we are in a world of exchange of ideas of techniques and that's how we can be tolerant how we can fight racism how we can fight injustice how we can live with dignity in the south like in the north, because um, when you don't know someone, you are afraid of that person. When you don't know a culture, when you don't know a country, when you don't know the people, you feel superior to them, because in your own mind, you are richer than them. And the, the measurement of, of being rich today is all about money. And in Mali, we have another way to evaluate rich how rich we are. We are rich of culture. We are rich of techniques. We are rich of know-how and local knowledges. And that's, I think, a way to try to, to make fashion more, to see the people behind fashion. I think for me, that was a very important step. Yes. Uh, fashion is not only about glamour. It's about how people work, how people live, how they want to be seen, how they want to be heard, and how they want to be accepted. Because we are in a world today where acceptance is the main issue, no matter your color, no matter your age, no matter your race, acceptance is very important. And in order to be accepted, you don't need to be, I mean, everybody has the right to be accepted. And I think fashion is the best way for that. Because every, so many people are attracted by fashion. Yes, exactly. 
and fashion can be the mirror of our continent. Mm. I definitely believe in that. And cotton is as a strong place to take in that because cotton is part of our history, of our present, but also of our future. But we have to see how important cotton can be the ink to write our new narrative. Things are changing so fast and we have to, to follow the pace, but at the same time, we have to be able to make propositions. Proposals are really important. And I think that my main uh, concern, I'm very, I believe in what I do. I work with people who trust me. We started with almost nothing. Mm. And the link we, we managed to, to create, we are like a big family and that's really important. Yes. Because you can trust them, they can trust me. And that trust is the light that you, you can see in the work we do because we inspire one another. They can see something on TV and say, oh, I like this. It's like a kind of curiosity. We want all to learn because we are, that's what I tell them all the time. I'm the one who travel. I'm the one who understand a little bit English. Yes. And I come with sometimes my own point of view, but they're able to discuss it. And that's, pas it's so passionate because it's a kind of sharing. And yeah. the result of what you see is the sharing we have in our creative process. Yes, and I love that. I love that. And it, that's, you know, that's, that's how it is. It's, it's creating because of the new um, conversations, because of the different experiences and you know I, I love that I love how you say it's family I love how you say cotton is the ink of a new narrative I love it all of this but how did you I mean with that the fact that you're working with you know skilled um creatives artisans makers um visionaries just like yourself how did you actually start it like what was the first step was it you were physically doing things yourself or you met somebody who was a weaver or a cotton farmer or uh, indigo dyer? How did, the, how did it first start? I think that it all started with my, my family because my mother is very passionate about culture. She's a writer and she's very passionate about culture, about economy, about politics. Yeah. And she, she, she makes the link about all that. And I've been, I grew up in that. Yeah. And when I went to the, to the US to study sociology, um, they were talking, I had a professor what, who was talking about Mali because she came to Mali to do a, a paper. And the way she was talking about Mali was not the way I, I knew my country. Mm. I did not agree with so many things, but I didn't have the tools uh, to correct her. And then I decided to come back and to travel in my own country. Because in order to talk about yourself and to the place you are from, you have to know it first. Yeah. So I decided to come back and I started to travel by bus to go to different parts of the country. And um, I stayed uh, two months in a village, in a Fulani village. And in that village, uh, women were using um, fibers to make baskets. And they, they, they are all also, um, they have cattle, they, they sell milk. And when I was there, it was very difficult because they couldn't make a living out of it. Uh, it was dry. It was a, a difficult time because it was not raining enough. The cattle didn't have enough food. So they didn't have milk from the cattle. They had to, to use powder milk to make milk to sell. So I was there. I was like, how can I help them? What they do with the, with the basket is so beautiful. So I started to work with them on the baskets. And when I came back to Bamako, the capital, I started to sell it. And I was selling it really well. So I started to, to do things in the villages where I stopped. And 
to work with the people who welcome me so well without asking me nothing. When I was in these villages, I had a place to sleep. I had food to eat. Mm -hmm. I was with people and everything was so simple because they don't accept you for what you have or for who you are. They accept you and they give you love because you come to them so simply. The simplicity was, was the best part of it. So I've received so much from them that when I came back, I was like, what can I, how can I give something back? Um, I just finished studying. I don't have any money, but money, they, there I saw, I understood that money was not everything. It was important, but it was not everything. Before making money, we have to find a way. We, we need to find a product to sell first. Yeah. So yeah. that's how it started. And then, you know, it, it became bigger. Yeah. We did different things, then cotton, then recycling. And that's how we started. It really started from the, the need to do something for people who give me so much. I just think that's amazing. It's, um, I'm learning so much more depth about you. I mean, I met you first in... Um, in um, Burkina, yeah. uh, and you know that was an amazing event that we were attending, and you won the fashion, the fashion show that you done. I just fell in love with the product because it was just so unique, so fresh, so there's just something special about it. I knew I could see the hand that had made the product, the, yeah. not just the product, the textiles. It was art. For me and that's why i had to come and speak to you after i just fell in love out of everybody else i was like this one and there were some big designers there as well but this one i need to go and speak to her about this and then we met again in um geneva at the world cotton day um and you know just the fact you're at these events is because you need to be you're relevant you're working in these industries and we need to see less of them so to speak and more of those who are doing things on the ground, those who are touching lives and do, your, you know, what you just said about going to the villages and, and meeting people and seeing what they're doing and creating market access for them and their work. Now, these are the stories that we need to tell. Do you think that you, because I loved how you said about the university teacher and they were given the wrong kind of narrative about your country. Do you think that you would have gone back and explored if that had not happened at, in the U.S.? Uh, not that way. Okay. Not that way. The way it happened, I felt so disappointed about myself first. Oh. Because... Um, she talked about a country because she, she went there. She went in the villages. She took time to do it. Uh, in Africa, most of the time we are, you know, people from the city. We do everything in the city and we don't go to the countryside anymore mm. because we have everything in the city. And I was a city girl. Okay. Before me, you know, I was... I was seeing craftsmen and uh, artisans I'm working with in the city because there's a big market, there's a need, but going on the field in the villages was because uh, things were going on there. She was talking about Mali as a, um, she was a teacher of anthropology. Yes. So she was talking about Mali, about the, the roots. And I had to go back to my own roots. And today I can thank her for that. What made me, what hurt me at that time, helped me build and structure myself. And today I can talk about my own country. Today, if I go to a conference with this professor, this teacher, I can speak. <laughs> yes. Because I know who I am uh, by knowing my country by knowing better my culture. And it's very, it's very important. I think education is all about that also. It's not just to go to school to learn 
uh, what school can offer you. It's true, yeah. Beyond school. Go out and exactly. experience um, exactly. reality. And I, I always say to those who, you know, as a sourcing agent within Africa, well, for African fashion, I say to people, you want to work with Africa, you need to go out, even if they just go to the, the big cities. At least you go and you have a, a, a taste and experience. But to just only do the work based in the diaspora, in the UK, the US, the U Europe, you're not going to, you're going to miss out. And you're saying even if you're in Africa and you're, you're a city girl, still go to the villages, go out and find out, learn about yourself in the country and what's to offer there. You found something amazing. So I totally agree. What we do, because that seems like a, 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 a strong positive about doing business in fashion business in Mali is the different skills around the country. Um, what would you say are some of the other positives and some challenges doing fashion business in Mali? Uh, doing fashion business in Mali is... Yeah. Um, it's not very easy, but it depends on it depends on your goal. Why do you do fashion first? Mm. For me, I think that fashion is like the next level of what I started. Because I see fashion with the eye of a person who studied sociology. Uh, I always link fashion to the people who make fashion, the people who work. So it's a story. It's not just uh, the aesthetic. It's not only about the aesthetic. It's about how you work, what you have to propose, what impact it's going to have. How do people who do it see themselves in it? How, how can we achieve the quality part of it? Because it is a process of improvement. Uh, fashion is so so rich. You have so many people in fashion. You always have to to create something different. I'm not saying something new because new is impossible. So many things have been done. Exactly. But what can can you make differently to make your your product attractive? To make your product uh, to have a story behind it, a human story. So that's the work we are doing. Each piece is like unique, as you said, because most of it, most of it is unmade. We are, we, are getting, we are getting inspiration from traditional technique, but we are making everything modern. I, I wear cotton, but I wear things I like. I wear things like that someone today, people can wear and can refer to. So that was that's very important, mm -hmm. and, and the cotton is is a kind of healer here. I call it the healing cotton because okay. the the cotton on your skin is so soft, and we it's funny to see the way we work. We are always so surprised ourselves because it's like a laboratory. We make research of patterns of colors. And we do it together. So it's so, I, I, I wish that one day we'll be able to come to, to Mali to see, to Bamako, to see how we work. It's, uh, we fight a lot, we laugh. We, we spend time, you know, discussing. And we say, oh, well, please leave it. You don't know that we are the craftsmen. We know we are from this village. We have what? learned from our grandfather. You cannot go this way with the weaving. Just try it. Be open. Just try it. And when they try it, they see something else. So it's, it's really challenging. It's, it's, it's so wonderful. It's so, it's, funny. it's so funny hearing you say that. I mean, you know, you're there challenging the, the, the artisans and makers to push them a little bit further. And it's, 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 a, it's a healthy battle. A healthy exactly. battle. Um, exactly. so I know just working as a fashion designer as I have, and I've always been the one like, like yourself who's like, no, 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 but we can do it. Let's push. Let's try it. Why not? Just add this. And so what if it goes wrong? Let's just try. 
Yes. I straight up the bat because that's when you do the experimental things. Sometimes it's like, oh gosh. And sometimes it's like, oh my goodness, it's amazing. But you won't ever know until you Try. do it. I was reading something earlier today and they were saying that when it comes to creating something, it's a quote, I can't remember who said the quote, you are, the three responses you're, you're going to get, um, like, no, yes, I like it, no, I hate it, or wow. And we should aim to get the wow responses. And I think that's what you're, you're pushing for the wow, which is amazing. You have to feel it yourself first. That's yeah. what I'm telling them. They say, never think that people won't like it. You have, sure. to like, you have to like it yourself first. I always tell them, if we don't succeed, we'll worry it ourselves. Don't worry about how people will react. Mm. Do something you like first. And then people will like it because there's something in it that you feel yourself first. And that's how we work. Sometimes we use colors, some colors I don't like, but someone in the team likes it. And I say, okay, since you like it, we'll do it. And then, and then that can be the piece we sell the most. Yeah. So we, we, and that person is so pride, proud. After they come, they say, you see? You see, you have a boss, but yeah. I found that corner. And it's so funny because it's, they, feel, they feel at home. Oh, and that's very important. We all feel at home and we, we feel safe to be creative together wow. because it's easy to be creative because you have criticism you have so many things coming here, and you have this you feel scared also are people going i like it but i mean i can be i remember also i had um i started um, a fashion school i just stayed a few months there and uh, the work I was doing, the sketches I was doing, this lady, this professor told me, oh, your style is too African. Oh, and the, <laughs> what's wrong with that? <laughs> the day she told me that, I just left. I just left. And I said, well, I have to, I have to express myself with that, that style. And that's how I started to do things without wanting to go to school. Because I, I told myself that day, if you follow, it's important to know the techniques. It's very important to know the techniques. Yeah. Sometimes I, I feel that I miss a lot. So at the same time, you can find people who are really good with techniques. But the inspiration, you really need to have your personal inspiration. Okay. You need to have a way to, to build things in your head. And when someone tells you that the way you build it is not the right way, you have to be in this canva, that I think is dangerous. Mm. And that, I think, I think in Africa, uh, it's important to have a technique, but it's, it's important to have a confidence in our way, uh, to, to have confidence in the way we want to build things. That's very important. And speak your truth. You know, you're, you know, so what if something is African? If you're African, then you're going to do things as an African because that's who you are. Maybe you will adopt different ways if you want, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's your truth. And that should be celebrated. And um, one thing I do love about what Africa and Africans are doing right now at the time of this video, we're still in um, like a post-COVID kind of lockdown, post-quarantine kind of era. I don't even know where what's happening right now. But what I've been seeing is that many Africans are pivoting, are um, translating the skills into um, doing mask making or other kind of medical gears and so forth. And I know that you've been doing, especially the mask. Could you tell us a little bit about that transition over and how the community projects that you've got associated with this. Mm -hmm. um, I started to make masks when uh, COVID was starting in, in France. Okay. Because I was watching the news, I was like paranoia about everything. Yeah. And 
uh, people were wearing masks. So we started to buy masks uh, in the pharmacy here, and it was too expensive for my team and myself and my family because you have to wear it three hours, and after that you have to change it. And we couldn't we couldn't afford that for I mean for a week it was a lot because we are a small small business, and I wanted everybody to have one. So uh, we started to, to recycle the small pieces of, of textiles, the woven textiles. And we started to make masks out of them. When I started it, it was, it was a big issue because I started to post it. And people were saying, no, Awa, it's risky, don't do that. I said, but I'm not saying that it's going to protect, but at least it's going to stop something. Yes. So that's how we started. And then um, I started also to give it out to the community because I live in an um, you know, area that is very poor. So my, my, my house is in the middle of it. And uh, I started to, to give it out for free to people around me. Okay. And to the children, to the families. And people started to come. I was like, there were so many people coming to me to ask for masks. I didn't know what to do anymore. Wow. <laughs> so I, I asked online for people to help. And people started to, to buy like one mask for $50, for $100. It was amazing. People wanted to help the process. And that's how we started. And then we made masks for free. And uh, then the, the, the Malian state put a process in place, one Malian, one mask. And they asked me to, to be part of it. And that was really interesting because I work with, you know, tailors who, you know, who work on the street, with women. We have a big community now of people who make masks. And that's very interesting because they can make money out of it. And it, I have like uh, interviews with them. Some people, oh, I, I managed to build one a small place to make my house bigger a little bit. I, I managed to buy more sewing machines. So it's it's like it's um, a crisis, a health crisis. But there's a kind of solidarity that we we managed to build around it to make it bearable and to to care one you know for others and for ourselves because it's it's not only about masks that's what i tell people also you have to to, clean, to wash your hands to to be to respect the distance and it's very difficult in the country like Ma, in countries like mali because people live in, a, in one family you can have 20 person in one family yeah. if one person wears a mask we have our own reality so we have to adapt and giving, helping is very important in that, in this kind of place because people rely, you know, on on one another. So the mask story is very interesting because it it opens other perspectives and other way to to be together. I love it. I love it. I love it because you've broken it down to explain the reality of what is actually happening. It's not just, okay, we're making masks. It's, this is the situation and this is why we're doing it. And this is the government has called for this, the one Mali in one mask. Um, so you were able to get some e external support from um, the community because you do have a platform, you do have an international um, customer base, I guess. You have an online shop. Um, Explain some of that around the, the way that you sell and market your products as well, because I know you do homeware, clothing, and masks now. So explain about um, your selling and marketing, like, yeah, you have a shop or you do online. Or that. The, shop, the, the shop is the place where I do... Uh, where I sell the most because in the shop we have a weaving machine. When yeah. people come, they can see the technique and they can choose the textile they want us to make. Um, so it's very it's interactive. 
And the shop is not like a shop. We wanted the shop to be cozy, to be a place where people feel welcome. When you come, we, we give you ginger, a glass of ginger juice, and we talk with you. Um, they can touch the textiles. So the shop is all about that. Now we have like customers who come every Saturday. Over the weekend they come because they see it, they talk, and they call before. So it's like a showroom uh, we open on a rendezvous. People, so it's very interesting, but we make good business with the shop. And then the um, Facebook, Insta uh, are very good also for the business because we post also uh, the um, limited editions. So people contact us direct, directly. And now we find uh, with um, Industry Africa, uh, there is a shop online yeah. and, there with them. and that's very interesting too because there are amazing designers from Africa on that and uh, you, you just feel you know proud to be part of it and like uh, Lagos Fashion Week also which is an amazing platform uh, we sell uh, in Alara too so we have we have different places where we sell and uh, and directly or with the shops around Africa or with the, with the selling online. So a lot is going on and uh, a lot is going on with, and the story is being heard. Good. The way we work because it's, that was the main interest. I, I, I remember that when I went to Lagos Fashion Week before my, my, my show, I saw the different pieces and what I do was so different the way, and I was like, ooh, how is it going to be? <laughs> it's it doesn't be refreshing and <laughs> different and unique and adds to everything else. That's but, how I do it. You know, as a designer, you question, as a designer, you question yourself because you walk around, you see, and that was my first fashion week because we I'm not... We are our biggest crit critiques. <laughs> As a creative, we are the biggest critique of our work. Yeah. Critics of our work. So I, I totally understand. Yes. <laughs> and I'm not a fashion week person, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, it was so... But at the same time, um, Akerele uh, Oyomemi, who is the, the founder of the Lagos Fashion Week, when she saw my piece in Dakar, I was doing a shoot and she was just passing by. When she, she saw the piece, she said, you have to come to Lagos Fashion Week. She I was knows. like, oh, good eye, she knows. <laughs> amazing, who are you? And <laughs> you have to come to Lagos Fashion Week. So this is how it started. But at the same time, when you go there, you see things and you say, oh, oh maybe she liked that piece. And the reaction was, wow, it was really, I mean, I was amazed when I came back. I was like, and I, I was, I was taking pictures to the team here. They were reacting and it was amazing. I think it's very important to have that kind of platform in Africa because yeah. it really has uh, an impact. Yes. And it's a way for us to, to show what we do to the rest of the world and to not only in Africa, because it is, it's, it's expensive to, to do it elsewhere. We cannot afford it. But in Lagos, in Abidjan, in Dakar, in Bamako, I think that we, we should have more events like that. And also to, to be linked because the medias, the, the French speaking countries and the English speaking countries should come together to, to be able to have the, the different media in different languages because the, the, the barrier of language is also a problem. That's why I'm learning French. <laughs> I'm learning. The coverage in English has more impact than the coverage in French. It's true. It's true. That, that forum in, in English speaking countries is more important and can, can consume more. Can can make it more sustainable, and absolutely, absolutely. Um, this is why um, um, how do I say that? Let me try. Je parle le cœur de français depuis le mois de 
Yes, um, février. Super. Sept ans. Sept ans? Sept ans? Sept ans. So, yeah, I'll try it. I'll try it. <laughs> I'm good, but I'm trying. But no, it's, it's so important. I'm doing that because there's many countries, French-speaking, and amazing designers. And if you can't communicate, you're missing stories. And they're missing being on your platform. And it shouldn't be that way. The language should not be a barrier. English-speaking countries just need to make more effort. And that's why I'm invested in making the effort. But yeah, it takes time. <laughs> but what would you like to see? What would um, you like to see happen in Mali and its fashion and textile industry? What is happening is we can say that um, a fashion revolution is starting in Mali because we, we are starting to to appreciate our own textiles yes you know it's it's very difficult when you see the soaps the movies and everything you see on tv you have you want to to look like you know the stars you see on tv and now the stars uh the afro-americans mainly are referring to the African designers. Good. And we feel, we feel more and more confident about it. Good. And uh, we, we, we feel the need also to, to do more than what we are doing in terms of creativity, in terms of research of material, of textiles. And that's really, that's really important. Something is going on right now. Yes. And, it's not, and it's going on you know, the change is coming everywhere. Yes. And the, the need, you can feel the need. Um, right now, we all don't have access to that market, to, that, to those people. But still, it's important to, to see that people are contacting us. They, are, they know about us now. And they are watching us. And... It's like a dynamic that is helping all the industry in Africa. And that's amazing because you create more jobs, you make things, you know, you can make things better, you can have a better organization, and you have an impact locally. That's really important. For me, the local impact is important. Like I told you, the place where I live is like, you know, so many things to do. Uh, fashion for me is not just fashion. It's, by, it's about a mean to make a change, a change for the people, for my country, and for the people who are elsewhere but who love Africa but don't see enough of a positive image of Africa. It's and see who make awesome. a change from Africa, and that's really important. Uh, we, we've decided to stay in Africa to make a difference. And we don't feel alone, and that's really important, like what you're doing now, uh, your platform. And I think it's very important because it's beyond fashion. Yes. And that's, that's a need for today, that's a need because we, we can speak for ourselves. Uh, we, can, we can show what is going on, and we can make people see how rich the, our cultures are and the diversity the diversity is amazing and the fashion we make is profiting to people themselves when you see the, the international tendency sometimes they say this year is africa but nothing is produced in africa it is made in china you see silk with mud cloth so there's it, it brings nothing to africa exactly. but when African designers working in Africa, they make people work, they make the country richer, they make, they, they, they find solutions to problems that, that nobody can solve for us. And that's really important. It's starting. It is starting. It's not easy. It is not easy because the resources are very little, but with that little resource, resources, we see that people 
are in the center of the matter because people have knowledge, people want to work, people want to make the life better for themselves and for the future generation. People want to, to have a clean environment, people want to plant trees, people want to live and people want to love. And that's how we can achieve with fashion and with the local economy. That's just amazing. That's just wonderful. It's, it's, this interview is going to go out and it's, I'm sure it's going to change and impact so many people. Um, and this is Mali, people. This is not the typical countries you think of in Africa. This is Mali. Um, so just to end this interview, do you have any... I'm going to start focus on those who are... Because the people who are watching these videos tend to be those in the diaspora, people who have a love for Africa interest and they want to start fashion businesses doing um, made in Africa, traditional textiles, etc. And so let's talk, let's talk to them. What would you, what tips would you give to them about working with maybe the artisans or setting up business in Africa, maybe in Mali? What would you recommend? What advice? would you give? I think uh, what I will recommend is to follow your own instinct. That's all I can say. And, um, and to be open because I see myself, I don't have a fashion background. Mm. But you see that everything is linked. And um, it's to, to listen to oneself, to feel things because and to, to see fashion as a way to, to tell a story, not just to copy something you saw already on TV that you like. It's not about doing something that someone else did better than the way you will be able to do it. It's not only about that. It's about to add something to what has been done. And that's very important to make the difference. And it's not just about success or being known. Success can take time. But success has, in, in success, you need to have a content, not just the light or the, you know, the shine, the, the glamour. It's not only about that. Um, fashion is a mean to achieve a lot. And we have to know that we have to work toward that. Because when you are a creative, you are a dreamer and you hope that you have to do things to make it better. You have to be in action. Yes. That's, I think, I can advise. Action for a purpose. Take action for a purpose. Wow. That's how you can create, some impact, create the impact that we should be focusing on. I love this. So just lastly, before we completely end, anything new coming up that we should know about um, we could share with our, our watchers, followers? Is there any new products, any um, online shows you're doing? Any, yeah, what do you have coming up in the next few months, maybe? Oh, for the next few months? For well, the rest of this year. I know the year has gone a bit like, woo! <laughs> I'll let you know. It's like cooking right now. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'll keep connected until it is finished and then we can eat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'll let I'm you sure know. there's lots to come. I'm enjoying watching your journey. I wish I got to know you earlier, um, but I'm glad that I met you that day in Burkina, Burkina Faso and again in Geneva and you know your family as well and you're just doing oh I'm just in love with, with what you're doing and I, sometimes I feel jealous because I am a creator but mm -hmm. you are doing things hands-on that I, that I just love that is fashion that is design what you are doing and it's got meaning it's got purpose and it's there to make impact so I would like to thank you um, sister our Thank you so much for your time um, and wishing you every success with the next step. We'll be following up. We'll be, I'll be staying in touch and hopefully see you when the world kind of <laughs> changes again. I don't know what's going on. 
but um, stay safe and um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. And, um, thank you. Thank you for those, those who are watching, um, remember, subscribe to this channel. We're bringing you stories from around the, the continent of Africa. Those who are doing meaningful things on the ground in Africa, changing narratives, touching lives, and rewriting history through the vehicle and the medium of fashion and textiles. So I'm Jacqueline Shaw, African fashion business coach, and I'll see you on the next video.